And joining us now is our international affairs editor, Armin George. And uh, so we're seeing El Sadr made those comments a short time ago. What exactly did he have to say? Well, he had uh, d different messages here, Monty. Some were aimed at his base and other were, was aimed at Iraqi society as a whole. So on the first point, he uh, criticized corruption. He talked about how if the militias had been disarmed, then the crisis wouldn't have got to the point that it has. Uh, but he also wanted to sound like a statesman, as someone who was trying to rise above sectarian politics. So, uh, for example, saying that violence is not the way or thanking the army for not getting involved. And, of course, uh, giving his supporters this extraordinary ultimatum to leave the green zone within one hour. Uh, I think that ultimatum shows two things. One, that, again, showing him as doing something ostensibly in the national interest, uh, sort of rising above the fray, if you will, but also showing that he has this power to hold his people in check, to tell them to bring them on the streets when he wants, but also to make them get off the streets if he wants to do that. What's quite interesting, Monty, is that uh, very soon after uh, these comments by Sadr, the prime minister of Iraq also uh, expressed himself and thanked Sadr for uh, this speech, uh, thanking him for, uh, for uh, thanking Sadr for his stance for trying to lower these tensions. And this swift reaction, this swift reaction from the prime minister begs the question whether some sort of deal has been reached between the two men, between the Prime Minister and uh, and al Sadr. We'll have to watch that space, but just to remind our viewers, uh, Sadr's bloc uh, won the largest number of seats of any grouping in the parliamentary election last year, and yet that bloc has not gone into government. So this is, uh, this is a space that we should be watching now. Okay. International Affairs Editor Armin Georgian. Armin, thanks a lot. Thank you.